morning, everybody. Todd Metalhead Weatherman here, and happy Mother's Day to all the mothers out there. Hopefully, everyone is having a good start to the day and is staying safe, spending time with the family. In any case, though, here we got some weather to talk about for today, actually, and tomorrow as well. We're going to get into our slight risk, which we have two areas of interest here. We have this area that's over towards Texas and Louisiana, and then we have this area over towards Abilene, Texas to talk about for today. And then we also have that marginal risk that we talked about yesterday over here towards Green Bay. We're going to take a little bit more of an in-depth look on that today, and then we'll also kind of see what happens with tomorrow's setup as well. But in regards to today's threat, the main threat will be damaging winds and hail in both of these areas. They're is a 5% tornado threat that is just to the south of Alexandria, Louisiana. Also includes Houston, Lufkin, Austin, and just off to the east of San Antonio here. So definitely going to need to watch this area. We're going to be potentially going live this evening, depending on how things pan out. But for the most part, I'm not anticipating an extreme amount of severe weather still could be significant though there are some parameters that do have me concerned with that that today as we get into tomorrow we do have another five percent tornado threat migrates a little further to the north over towards Shreveport just to the east of Dallas and we even have parts of southern Arkansas in the mix we do have a very wide spanning two percent area that even includes the Georgia Florida line the Florida Panhandle southern Alabama southern Mississippi all of Louisiana and then of course back towards Texas once again also with this comes the threat of flooding to go along with the with this system here because we're pretty much going to be getting rain over the same areas over and over again we do have a very large wind and hail threat with the hail threat even having a hatched risk back towards the west do think there will be probably some early initiation with this setup here <clears throat> so next thing we're gonna do here and we're almost outdated on this one so may need to do a follow-up video tonight depending on how things uptrend or downtrend we're going to go ahead and take a look at the h triple r and get a look at what our upper level wind pattern the entire actually we'll take a look at the entire kinematic setup for this so as we go through the day today what we'll make note of is it seems like there's a round of initiation that could occur here based off where we see diffluence where you see that air spreading apart right here where we have this little jet stream right here and it looks like we get some initiation around lunchtime, but the big event really starts to happen as we get later into the evening. This would be again just to the south and east of Dallas, maybe over towards Lufkin and maybe even Austin, where I will be watching for increased probability of severe storms. I think further to the north there's initiation as well, but not quite as robust of an, of an environment at the moment here. There is a little bit of uncertainty with that. I think the capping is going to come into play. But if we go ahead and move this forward into tomorrow, that round ends up passing through the area. And then once again, just like with today's setup, we see some initiation begin to reoccur right around lunchtime and kind of pick up throughout the afternoon here. I do think Monday's threat does look like an early afternoon threat, but it does transition into the evening here. I don't think the parameters are quite as good for Monday in comparison to today in regards to our severe setup. But I still think we could see all hazards here. And like I mentioned before, really, I think off to the west, we're going to have some of the strongest storms. And then, like I said, early afternoon, I think that's when we'll see the increased activity over towards Louisiana and Arkansas in particular. As we get into the evening, this setup does kind of weaken just a little bit here. We start to lose some of that instability. Diffluence has become a little less organized. So I do think that we'll begin to see a little bit of a drop off in severe coverage as we head into Tuesday. Tuesday does have a marginal risk at the moment. The way things look right now, I anticipate things to stay that way. We shift over to the mid levels of the atmosphere here, and we're actually a little too far ahead. What we'll be looking for is our short waves, these little ripples within the contour lines or the isobars as they're actually called. You can see clear evidence of that by the time we get into lunchtime. This was that point of initiation I was talking about earlier towards Dallas. We could see some lunchtime storms, so be on the lookout if you're taking your mom, grandma, whomever, your, your maternal figure out for lunch. Then as you get later into the evening, this is where I'm most concerned about the threat of severe weather would be more so right here than anywhere else. 
I do see some pretty good evidence to kind of back that up. But in any case here, as we continue to go forward, we see evidence again of that short wave kind of persisting into the morning hours. So that line weakens, get some new initiation right around lunchtime. There it is right there. There's your short wave. And then as we continue to go forward, we see peak initiation begin to occur, up, I would say, right around the, let's say, like three or four o'clock central time. And then we see and we see these storms starting to drop off a little bit. We still have evidence of our short waves, but the environment itself, like I said before, we start to lose our instability with that loss of daytime heating here. So not quite as concerned in regards to the Tuesday setup as of right now. So we go into the low level jet for today. There's some interesting uh, parameters as we get later into the evening in particular. We do have that north to south or south to north flow like I've always been talking about when it comes to severe weather. So we do have that look. We are expecting storms over this region. So maybe over towards lunchtime, we could see a little bit of action and we'll actually see an increase in low level jet as we get closer towards the seven o'clock central time. Like I said, I'm most interested in this area over here towards Lufkin, maybe even towards Austin as well. I did look at a sounding earlier that's uh, pretty interesting. I'm going to try to see if I can find it here. This is actually severe sounding to go along with it, but this isn't the same sounding I found earlier. But we do have parameters for severe here in any case. And as we continue to move, we still have some low level jet energy left over as we get into the day tomorrow. And it kind of picks up again right over towards north central Louisiana, maybe even maybe even over towards southern Arkansas. It kind of picks up, of course, as we get towards sunset. And then, of course, it kind of fizzles out. And I think that's a big limiting factor to the Tuesday setup. <clears throat> so now that we've seen that, let's go ahead and take a look at our moisture. And I mean, this is pretty much going to come to no surprise to anyone. Gulf of Mexico has just been that hose of moisture, been that hose that's just never really been cut off. So it's, it comes to no surprise that we're going to have dew points in the 60s and the 70s all throughout the Gulf of Mexico states region and even heading into the deep south so definitely need to be on our game here in regards to our severe weather threat we do have the parameters that are in play like I said I do think the greatest threat is going to be more over towards maybe Lufkin and Austin for today tomorrow it's going to be more towards Shreveport maybe even towards Alexandria as well in Louisiana Let's go ahead and take a look at what our precipitable water is looking like. I've seen a lot of indicators with this in particular kind of leaning towards those high precip supercells that we all really hate. <laughs> but if we go ahead and take a look, look at how look at these uh, PW values. We're getting towards two inches, so definitely seeing the potential for some heavy rainfall here as well. And this is why I'm also concerned about that flood threat. And then of course, as we head into the day tomorrow. We see a very similar look again near pretty much above two inch PW values. Definitely not what you want to see over towards this region. And the thing is, even with uh, Tuesday setup here, even if you don't get much of the way of severe weather here towards southern Alabama, Georgia, Florida, the threat for flooding is going to be very real. It's very palpable in this situation here. With this much water available, we could have some ridiculous rainfall rates of above an inch an hour or more. And these areas just recently got rained on too. So definitely have my concerns there. So what we're going to look at next is our mixed layer cape here. This is going to show how much instability we have available in all levels of the atmosphere. And this is why I'm partially not too concerned about the lunchtime storms. Even though I think they have the potential to do something, the fact of the matter is the instability is kind of lacking at that time. And then again, once I mentioned before, over here towards Austin and Lufkin, this is where the instability really kind of picks up here, almost kind of maxes out in a way. And with that, this was the sounding I actually had found earlier right here. It almost has that loaded gun look to it, so it's kind of dangerous to see this here. All the parameters are in place here. We have pretty solid shear. We have a pretty good lift index. Getting into the more nerdy stuff here, but this is about what you would look for when it comes to the potential for maybe even a strong tornado. 
Then when you see this little uh, slot right here between three and six where it kind of dips down like this and then goes back up, also shows the potential for a high precipitation, maybe even a rain wrap supercell with the precipitable water, the PW uh, symbol right here showing 1.95. Everything just kind of matches up pretty well for a tornado threat here. Also, the threat of damaging winds is there with the decay and also our lapse rates. While they're not too incredibly steep, we could still get some big hail from this as well. So, like I said, everything's on the table for this one. So the last thing we'll go ahead and take a look at is our reflectivity. We're going to go ahead and see when our real start time ends up being. Like I said, I do expect some initiation to occur, increased initiation to occur around lunchtime. And I think this is what's going to help save areas like Dallas throughout the day. Could ruin your lunch date with, with family, but the real event gets started once we get later into the evening. We get storms to fire over here towards Lufkin, over towards Austin towards Houston could be a bit problematic here right now the coverage just seems kind of spotty and this is why it mainly is staying a slight risk and not being upgraded but depending on how this convection fires off we could have we could have a little bit of un, we could have some uh, wild cards come into play here so just because it's a slight risk don't downplay it don't take it for granted We've, we had a marginal risk yesterday over here towards Pennsylvania and Ohio, and we had a pretty strong tornado just go through Pennsylvania yesterday. So definitely need to make sure that you are staying weather aware today, especially over here towards Wisconsin and Michigan as well as we do. Like I said before, we, we have a pretty strong line of storms expected to come through this evening as well. Like I said, main threat with this is going to be damaging winds and hail. Not too concerned about a tornado threat, but again, you never know. So as we go into Tuesday here, here's our point of initiation right around lunchtime once again. This is when we expect those big hailers to come into play. Do have damaging winds expected with this as well. We do look like we end up getting a linear event, but I do see some prefrontal convection here as we get towards sunset over here towards maybe Mississippi and parts of Louisiana. Depending on how that low level jet acts throughout the day, we still may need to watch this area. Most favorable area for tornadoes still seem like it would be right towards the Louisiana Arkansas line though from the looks of it. But that window seems like it's pretty narrow too, so might be some good news there. And then as we go forward beyond that point, like just as I mentioned before, we start to lose that instability, storms weaken, and we're dealing with a lot of heavy rain at this point. So that being said, that's pretty much all I have for this video here. Not seeing too much in the way of significant parameters today, but there are some sneaky little areas that we will need to watch. We may go live today on this one. We may not. Depends on what I have going on. But in any case, though, I appreciate you guys being here. And I will see you again either this evening or tomorrow. Until then, it's been Tyron Metalhead Weatherman. You guys have a happy Mother's Day, and I'll see you next time.